Welcome to the Build Resilience series, one day at a time. What's in it for you? The intention is to assist you with real life coaching cases so that you get an idea of how one could build resilience through my journey of self program and many tools and techniques that you learn along the way so that you could use that way back in your life when you encounter a crisis, a setback, or a sudden change of event. Meet Simon. He's one of those people who's currently disengaged and so redundant at work that after repeated warnings, and feedback that he received in his performance appraisal. He made no positive shift and changes. And finally, one day he was fired. At present, Simon do not have any job at hand. He's just whiling away his time at home. Initially, Simon felt a bit happy and relaxed while he was out of his job because he could find time to catch up with some of his friends to do certain things that he had been procrastinating for a while. But after a few days and weeks, his demotivation level began to dip more than the normal levels. He would just spend time watching TV or the web series for constantly, non-stop, for hours and hours together. He's least interested to find a new job for himself. And this way of his life has completely shifted Simon from a productive worker to a couch potato. He's so much so disengaged, both in his personal and professional life, as if he has just lost his purpose. He feels lethargic. He doesn't even have a good sleeping pattern. His food habits have changed drastically. And each of these is having a drastic effect, not just on his physical health, but to the people around him, including his family, his parents, and his siblings. Simon is clueless. Not just that he's stressed and worried. He's kind of feeling lost, trapped, and completely lacking any clue of which way he should move ahead. And that's exactly when I took Simon on a journey of self. This is the journey of self. This is my coaching program through which all my clients, regardless of whether they take the short term program or the long term, will move through these phases. It consists of seven phases. And basically each phase I would share you, it begins with diagnosing and understanding the present challenge at hand, which consists of uncovering, exploring the challenges and deep diving. This is done through techniques, tools, mostly neuroscience based and concepts embedded in psychology. Having uncovered the real challenge or the problem at hand, we then move into a phase of getting the client into action. This is where all that has been figured out or diagnosed. We create a plan. The plan of getting things executed. This get into action is more of if let's say someone has to overcome a self-limiting belief or someone has to overcome a phobia, a baseless fear 
or someone has to build a new habit. Whatever the case may be, the phase four, five, and six is all about getting into action and building that practice. This entails a plan with a timeline and what specifically the person need to do to experience the real change or the transformation they're looking for or sometimes the solution to the problem. Because every one of us have a unique life with our own individual experiences, there's no one set or one fit for everyone. Each to his own, depending on what kind of issue or what kind of challenge one is into. Based on that, one develops this. Once this is experienced or this phase is completed, you then move into the phase seven, which is usually towards the end of wrapping up and closing. And here's where we end with the real outcome of finding a clarity and direction in the crisis and also building that muscle of being resilient. When I say build the practice here in phase five, one more thing that I would like to mention here is these phases, specifically four, five, and six, are also the most difficult ones because here's where the transformation is happening and here's where you will feel yourself completely at discomfort because you're stretching your comfort, comfort zones. You are shifting out and a new reality is being created. So th these are very crucial phases. And depending on the issue and problem, for some, it takes months to really get there. For some, the short-term program is basically with some workarounds to help people who are in deeply into a crisis to quickly found a workaround. But the long-term one is where you actually develop your resilience skills and the ability. And finally, we close with phase seven. And there's a lot more that you do once you've been through this journey of self. This is Simon's journey of self. Present day today, Simon is jobless, hopeless, worried, and depressed. And the future self, where Simon want to get into someone with certainty, confidence, and with a job. In this episode, I will walk you through the first three phases of Simon's journey of self, in which we will uncover, explore the challenges he's facing, deep dive to some of those, and help Simon build that resilience. In the phase one, two, and three, even though I use various other techniques and methods, for Simon specifically, I have been using these four arrow method, these uh, four bubbles, with some very simple questions just to uncover and understand precisely the many reason behind Simon's lethargy, depression, and his lack of complete motivation to look and find another job. So while I asked him these simple questions, here's what Simon has shared with me in terms of responses. There's a lot more that was divulged, but for the sake of just the session, I bring to you what we really need to understand, how we uncover and help people through a coaching program. Now, we all know that Simon's main issue started when he lost his job and his life took a different turn. One thing led to another. But which means like when when I asked him, when did it all start? 
he shared with me the performance appraisal experience he had. Followed by a client visit, this was one of the most demanding client he ever worked with. And the office politics, his toxic boss, his demanding client, were also one the reasons underneath Simon's lack of motivation at work. So when we started with to understand why Simon was so disengaged and living a life of a person only watching movies, TV, and whiling away his time, while he should be somebody who always has been productive and at work, even in his personal life. Simon's initial response with it where the concept of that his supervisor has changed, the new one was very difficult to deal with, including the client, and therefore he felt they were the reasons why he really couldn't work the way he should have been, why even on repeated feedback and warnings, his, his performance remained below average, and finally he was fired. But one thing that really caught my attention was when I asked him, what else? Well, this is not the first what else that I had asked him. This was basically the several other what else's. And I have an answer to that, which I'm not putting it up here. But this is where the main issue Simon was reeling under. There was a property conflict back home where Simon was in a major conflict with one of his close uncle and a distant relative, because of which, adding to that, his performances were taking a dip and he just found himself not really being able to deal with either the toxic bosses, the new leader, or his relatives, which were another breed to manage. This question, cost of inaction, I put this across to Simon, and this is typically uh, very typical of any coach, is the very intention here is to let the client understand what really will happen if they don't look for support or get into action and adapt the right methods to find a way out to their issues. So, this is what Simon's response has been. Well, then I moved Simon case to the phase two and three where we deep dived. Now, this is a way where we reconnect the dots of many things happening in one's life. And we did the same for Simon. This deep dive sessions were themed around the biggest drain on his resilience. One thing that I would like to mention here, friends, is Resiliency is a life skill. None of us are born resilient, but our resiliency reserves varies from person to person. And our upbringing, our mindset, our environments play a pivotal role in the kind of person we are in bouncing back to the various stresses and issues and problems we face in life. So the very idea I had put these two questions across to Simon was to understand what was his source of resilience and what was the biggest drain on his resilience reserve. These are the answers that Simon shared. If you really look around this, it's a cluster of both his personal and professional life and the people involved in it. Simon is a clear case of someone who are not really equipped to deal with some very difficult clients and certain times in our career life where we encounter people who are way authoritative with a different working style and are quite political. 
as an employee or even as an individual, not necessarily everyone is equipped enough to deal with the day-to-day -day politics at office. Simon was one such case. So the biggest drain that he shared on his resilience was his office environment. Not necessarily that Simon was uh, someone who's not productive at work. It's the environment, the people around and the culture which was taking a toll on his performance because he was just not able to give his best shot regardless of how hard he worked. On to the source of resilience. Simon mentioned here that he lacked a support system which was quite obvious because of the Simon's, the way Simon's life has been moving, where from a productive worker, he was fired, he was sitting at home and completely demotivated, heedless, completely lacking in direction and clarity as to where he's heading and what he should do next. Usually our deep dive sessions are built around these theme, but they vary from person to person. In case of Simon, I put this across because it is a case where a person has a setback in his professional life, which has its root in the personal life and has a cascading effect to his overall life.